Shalom Israel, Most High Christ Bless, Officer Lemuela, IUIC Dallas, and my reader to my right. Officer Simeon. All praise to the Most High. So we want to do this class for brothers and sisters to exhort you and to encourage you and to build you up when it comes to controlling your thoughts. It comes up often in, tar in terms of how do I control my thoughts to make sure that I'm in line with what the scriptures are saying and what the Lord requires of me as a repentant Israelite. All right. So we're going to go over that. Let's start in Sirach chapter 6 and verse 18. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up, so shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. So the scripture says, gather wisdom in your youth. You're gathering instruction in your youth, not just in terms of age, but when you're young in the truth, three months, six months, nine months, a year, you're gathering this instruction. So by the time you're an aged or senior brother or sister in this truth, you'll be able to instruct those that are coming in upon you. All right. So let's go from there to Romans chapter 12, verse two. Let's see what the most high in Christ are trying to show us in the spirit in regards to changing our thoughts and changing our mind. Come on. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. And be not conformed to this world. Don't do the things of the world. Don't follow what the world is doing. If you're following the majority, it's guaranteed that you're falling right into destruction. You're following right into destruction. Come on. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But be transformed or changed by the what? By the renewing of your mind. We have to renew our minds. We have to renew our minds. Before you can change your speech, before you can change your actions, you have to change and transform your mind. Come on. That ye may prove what is that, what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we can know how to please God. So we know what's good according to the Lord. So we'll know what's acceptable according to the Lord. From there, let's go to Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. Let's see what's in our minds naturally. What we're born with in our minds. What the world has to offer. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. This is the book of Mark chapter 7 verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So Christ said, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So what that's saying is, Christ is saying that you, when it comes to your heart, when you read the word heart in the scriptures, it's not necessarily meaning the, the organ that's pumping blood in your chest. It says, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. The, the organ that's pumping in your chest, that doesn't have thoughts. But what does have thoughts is your mind. So read it again. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Proceed evil thoughts. Let's see what those evil thoughts are. Read. Adultery. Uh -huh. Fornications. Murders. Thefts. Covetousness. Wickedness. Uh-huh. Deceit, come on, lasciviousness, uh -huh. an evil eye, uh -huh. blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. All of these things come from our minds, and that's what defiles us. Because all of our action, all of our speech, it starts in the mind. So if you entertain a foolish thought long enough, Eventually, it's going to come in your speech. It's going to manifest in your speech. Eventually, it's going to manifest in your actions. That's why Christ said you have to be transformed in your mind first. Your mind changes first. Your thoughts change first. And then your actions and your speech follow right after that. So let's go from there. Let's go to Sirach. I'm sorry. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9 and verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, and verse 14. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, and verse 14. Uh-huh. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. So God says our thoughts are miserable. 
We just read what's miserable in our thoughts. We just read that in Mark chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Come on. And our devices are but uncertain. And our devices, our actions, our speech is uncertain. We never know from day to day what we're going to do. Because our thoughts control our speech. Our thoughts control our actions. Come on. For the corruptible body passeth down the soul. Read it again. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. And the earthly and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. So let's read verse 15. Verse 15. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, uh -huh. and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. So it says the corruptible body or the sinful body or our sinful thoughts presseth down the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things, meaning our minds, our thoughts that come from our corruptible bodies, our sinful bodies, they press down on our soul to the point where it will inevitably manifest in our speech whatever evil thought we're entertaining. We'll inevitably manifest in our actions whatever evil thoughts we're entertaining. That's what it means when it says the press uh, weigheth down the mind that museth, or another word for museth, to amuse or to entertain upon many things. So if you entertain a sinful thought long enough, inevitably it's going to defile you. Inevitably you're going to cave into it. Inevitably you're going to give in to whatever evil thought it is that you have. So that's why it's vitally important that we understand how to control our thoughts, how to control our actions, how to control our speech. So let's go from there to Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Let's see what Christ said when it comes to our thoughts. We're going to read an example of evil thoughts that we can have in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. The them of old time is talking about Moses. So in the laws of Moses, it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Read on. But I say unto you. But Christ says unto us, because remember, when Christ hit the scene, Christ magnified the law. So he brought the law full circle for Israel. Come on. That whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already. In his heart. So Christ is magnifying the law. He says, yeah, under the laws of Moses, if you slept with a sister that was not your wife, if you slept with somebody other than who you were married to, that was adultery. When Christ magnified the law, he says, if you even look upon a woman to lust after her or to commit adultery with her, you've already committed the act. Even though you haven't done it physically, in your mind, you've already done the act. Come on. Verse 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. So Christ is giving the problem. He said the problem is your thoughts. You entertain a dumb thought of adultery. And Christ says you've already committed the act because he already knew in the spirit. Your thoughts will inevitably manifest into actions. So he says, if you even have the thought, you've already committed the act. So now, right after that, he's giving a solution. So let's read the solution again. Let's get Psalm chapter 51 in verse 10. This is the book of Psalm chapter 51 in verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God. So remember, we just read in Mark 7 what it means to have a heart. The heart in the Bible is referring to your mind. So let's read it again. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Or a clean mind, O God. Come on. And renew a right spirit within me. And renew or transform or transform my spirit to be upright, to be righteous in your eyes, to be righteous in your sight, to be godly. Come on. Cast me not away from thy presence 
and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So what does it mean when it says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me? So let's get, let's see what it means to clean our hearts or cleanse our hearts. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. Because this is a Psalm of David that we just read. This should be a, a prayer for, that the nation of Israel should have in order for us to be able to overcome a spirit of lasciviousness, a spirit of concupiscence, which is strong sexual desires. Because a lot of times, brothers and sisters fall based on the lust of the flesh. And it starts with a thought. The issues that you have in your mind in regards to husbands and wives starts with a thought. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So the word of God is what cleanses us. The words of God is what cleanses us. That's what gives us a clean heart. So let's go back to Psalms 51 and verse 10. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. It says, and renew a right spirit within me. Hold that. Psalms chapter 19. Let's go to Psalms chapter 19. And we're going to start at verse 7. And we're going to read verse 7 through 9. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7 through 9. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Converting the soul or transforming or renewing the soul, your mind, your spirit. It's the laws of God that cleanses us. It's the laws of God that makes us upright. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Because in our unrepentant state, the Lord says we was a simple, stiff-necked, stubborn, hard-headed, rebellious people. And so when we come into this truth, we have the laws of God that are able to convert our souls or change our minds. Come on. The statutes of the Lord are right. The statutes, the judgments, the laws of God are what? The statutes of the Lord, Lord are right. Come on. Rejoicing the heart. Rejoicing the heart or rejoicing the mind. So the laws of God, the statutes of God, that's what's right. That's what renews a right spirit within us. Come on. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Enlightening the eyes, giving us true sight. Our vision has to be God's vision. Our eyes have to be God's eyes. We have to see everything and filter everything through the scriptures. We have to be able to filter every thought through the scriptures. We have to be able to have our eyes through the eyes of the scriptures. Come on. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. So you want to know how to have a clean heart? The laws of God, the fear of God. That's what gives us a clean heart. That's what renews our mind. That's what renews our spirit. Come on. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So if you do go off and you end up being judged for it, the Lord said that's righteous. The Lord said that's true. The Lord said it's just. But before it gets to that point, again, we want to make sure that we understand how do we change our minds? How do we control our thoughts? Let's go from there. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we don't use physical weapons in this fight, in this truth. We're not taking up guns or knives and stuff like that. We don't have no bombs and, and you know, missiles that, you know, that we can shoot. We don't have none of that stuff. Read it again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal. They're not tangible. They're not physical that you can see. Come on. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Because we're fighting a spiritual fight. So we use spiritual weapons. We use God's words, 
God's words are spiritual. Come on. Casting down imaginations. And that's what we do with the words of God. This is the weapon that we use to do what? Casting down imaginations. To cast down every imagination, every evil thought, every thought of sin. Come on. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Come on. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And we bring into captivity every thought under the obedience of Christ. And how do we do that? Using God's words. But if you do not have God's words in your spirit, you'll have nothing to pull from when those thoughts come up. When that spirit of concupiscence rouses up in you and you're not studying, how do you have anything to apply? How would you have anything to be able to pull down that stronghold? How would you be able to pull down every imagination? How would you be able to bring into captivity every thought under the obedience of Christ if you don't know what Christ requires of you as a repentant Israelite man, as a repentant Israelite woman? So let's go from that to Sirach chapter 6, verse 37. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 and verse 37. Let's get some more medicine. Let's get some more solutions on how you're able to overcome those evil thoughts. Sirach chapter 6 and verse 37. This is the book of Sirach chapter 6 and verse 37. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. So the Lord said, let your mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord. The ordinances of the laws, statutes, commandments of the Lord. It says, and meditate continually in his commandments. So it's not necessarily that you're reading the Bible physically for 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. You may not have that kind of time, you know, and that's understood. But your meditation should at, at, at least be, okay, what do I need to make sure I'm walking right? I need to make sure, okay, I remember what I read about the brother that wasn't wearing the fringes in Numbers 1538. Let me make sure I got my fringes on. Okay, uh, I need to make sure that I control my thoughts today because I remember what Christ said in Matthew 5, 27, when he said, if you look upon a woman of lust after her, you've already committed the act of adultery. I need to make sure that's you meditating. You're not necessarily physically reading for five hours, six hours, 10 hours a day, but you're constantly meditating and thinking about, okay, how do I make sure I'm upright? How do I make sure my thoughts are clean? How do I make sure my thoughts are pure? How do I make sure my thoughts are right? You understand? So read it again. Let thy, let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. He will establish thine heart, meaning he'll give you a solid foundation in this truth. You'll be rooted. You'll be planted. There won't be no man. There won't be a woman that can pull you out of this truth. There won't be a, a, a big behind or big breasts that'll be able to pull you out this truth. Why? Because you're constantly meditating in the law. Because you're constantly going through the scriptures and extracting the understanding that you need to be able to apply when certain situations come up. When those evil thoughts come up, you're able to cast them down. When those evil thoughts come up, you're able to control that thought so it doesn't manifest something evil in your speech. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let's go from there to Joshua Chapter 1 and verse 8. Let's get some more medicine. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You see that? If you're meditating in the laws of God day and night, it'll be a lot harder. There'll be very little room in your mind and in your spirit to entertain an evil thought. You won't have the time to entertain an evil thought because you're continually meditating. Come on. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. 
You understand that? So let's go from there to Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew 5. So now let's see what Christ's solution was for those evil thoughts, for those thoughts that defile us. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 through 30. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 through 30. Mm -hmm. Ye have heard that it was said by them in old times, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh Uh-huh. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So you have many brothers and sisters that deal with things like uh, pornography, whether it be on your phone, on your laptop, on your iPad or your tablet or whatever device it is you use. Esau, Edom, the Idumeans, the so-called white men, they make it very easy and very accessible for us to sin. Literally at the, the, the drop of a, a, a dime, at the click of a button, you have the opportunity to go through the world wide web and pull up whatever evil, uh, uh, lustful thing you can pull up. Whatever your, your mind lusts after, you're able to pull it up on your phone at the drop of a dime. That's why Christ had to write that in there. But he also gave us a solution. Verse 29. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So Christ said, is he saying if your eye offends you, pluck it out, like pluck out your literal eye? No. No. Of course not. He's not saying that. What he's saying is if the, whatever provision of the flesh is in, that you have in your life, those are the things that you need to cut off. If you need to cut off the, the smartphone for a certain period of time in order for you to overcome that and go back to a, a flip phone, then do that. Because it's not profitable for you to hold on to your cell phone, hold on to your electronic device, your iPad or whatever, and then you end up being destroyed when Christ returns because you haven't overcome that sin. Because you continue to make provisions for the flesh. Read on. Verse 30. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So it's profitable that you lose cable. It's profitable that you lose the, the internet service on your phone for a certain period of time or the, the, the internet service on your, your tablet. It's profitable that you lose certain of those things that you won't be destroyed when Christ returns. If, if he even gives you that long. All right, so let's go from there. I'm gonna give you the precept for that. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. This is what Christ was really saying, just to kind of sum it up. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. This is the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning put on all the commandments. Come on. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Don't make a, a, a little reserve or a little side pocket of sin. If your issue is weed, don't have a, a, a you still hanging with people that sell drugs. You still hanging around people that smoke weed. You're making provisions for the flesh. The Lord says it's profitable that you cut them off so that you won't die, so that you won't be destroyed, so that the Lord doesn't kill you. If your issue is pornography, don't, you, there are certain things that you're going to have to cut out of your life to make sure that you're not destroyed. If your issue is cigarettes or alcoholism, cut off the cigarettes. If you got to stop going in the store, just pay at the pump. If your issue is alcohol, stop going into the liquor store. You need to stop. Don't drink when you come into the school. You need to abstain if that's your issue. Make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Let's go from there to Romans chapter 6 and verse 12. 
Romans, let's stay in Romans, the sixth chapter and the twelfth verse. Sir. This is the book of Romans, the sixth chapter and twelfth verse. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body. Read it again. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body. So God says, let not sin reign or rule or have dominion in your mortal body, meaning in your flesh. Come on. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Because when you obey it, that means you fulfilled whatever thought it is that you have, you fulfilled it. So the Lord says, don't fulfill whatever evil thought you have in your mind. Don't obey it in the lust thereof because all it's a lust. Homosexuality, the spirit of homosexuality, it's a lust. It has deceived you into thinking that man, a, a man and a man can have a real love like that and a relationship like that. That's a very that's a lustful thought. You're being deceived. Your lust is deceiving you. That evil inside of you is deceiving you. A woman and a woman. Alcoholism, drunkenness, those are evil spirits that are decept that are deceitful. Come on. Verse 13. Verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. So it says, don't yield your members. Your members is your mind, your hands, your feet, your mouth. It says, don't yield those things as instruments or tools of unrighteousness. Come on. But yield yourselves unto God. But yield yourself unto God. Yield yourself unto his commandments. Yield yourself unto what's clean, what's pure, what's right. Come on. As those that are alive from the dead. Because you're alive from the dead. When you were in the Christian church, when you were in Islam, when you were in uh, uh, Seventh Day Adventist, or whatever other 5% of Egyptology or whatever other funky religion you was in, you were dead. You were spiritually dead. You were not physically dead, but spiritually you was dead. So now you have to yield yourself to the Most High. Now you have to yield yourself to his son, Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Come on. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now you have to yield your members, yield your mind, your speech, your actions as instruments unto God. Instruments of righteousness. That means keeping God's commandments. Let's go from there. Sirach chapter 23 in verse 2. This is the book of Sirach chapter 23 and verse 2. Who will set scourges over my thoughts? So who will set scourges or whips or lashes or punishments over my thoughts? Come on. And the discipline of wisdom over mine heart. We already went over what the heart was. The heart is referring to your mind, your thoughts. Who will discipline my thoughts? Who or what's going to be the driving force between behind bringing my thoughts under the obedience of Christ? Come on. That they spare me not for mine ignorances, uh -huh. and it pass not by my sin. When it says that they spare me not for mine ignorances, meaning my thoughts don't justify my wickedness. I don't allow my thoughts to justify my evil deeds. Oh, well, you know, the reason I was lusting is because, you know, she just had on all that short stuff. And I, I just had to lust after the sister. I had to get a number. It, that's your thoughts justifying you. They're sparing you for your ignorance. Read on. Verse 3. Lest my ignorances increase. So if your thoughts continue to justify your evil deeds, it says what? Lest mine ignorances increase. It says your ignorances will increase. Why? Because slowly but surely, your defense, which is the scriptures, and that wall and that standard that you had, eventually it'll start to fall. Sin will start to chip away at that shield of faith, that shield of righteousness, that wall of righteousness that you had. Come on. And my sins abound to my destruction. And your sins will start to abound to your destruction. You'll start to add sin on top of sin. Your defense will end up falling. Come on. 
and I fall before mine adversaries. And you fall before your enemies, your moms and your pops that, you know, you was confessing and you was yelling and throwing the Bible at them, talking about they need to repent. But then because you couldn't couldn't could not control your own thoughts, inevitably you ended up becoming destroyed yourself. Come on. And mine enemy rejoice over me. And you become a laughing stock to your enemies. Come on. Whose hope is far from thy mercy. Because their hope in their mind is far from the Lord. Come on. O Lord, Father and God of my life, give me not a proud look, but turn away from thy servants Always a haughty mind. Meaning, turn away from me a mind that cannot be corrected. Do not allow my thoughts to spare me for my ignorances. Come on. Turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscence. Concupiscence, a strong sexual desire, strong sexual thoughts. Come on. And thou shalt hold me up that is desirous always to serve thee. And thou shalt hold him up that is desirous always to serve thee. So if you're constantly meditating in the law, if you're constantly making sure that you're course correcting throughout this truth, you'll be held, you'll be held up by the commandments of God. The most high in Christ will hold you up in this truth and you'll endure unto the end. Come on. Let not the greediness of the belly nor lust of the flesh take hold of me. Don't allow my lust to increase. Don't allow my sin to bring me to destruction. Don't allow me to be holding to sin to the point of death. Come on. And give not over me thy servant into an impudent mind. An impudent, hard-hearted, hard-headed, stubborn, stiff-necked, unrepentant mind. Don't let me fall back out into the world. So that's why it's vitally important for brothers and sisters to understand that you have to be able to control your thoughts. It starts by meditating in the law day and night, continually bringing your thoughts under the obedience of Christ. When a thought tries to manifest itself, immediately you got to be able to cast it down using the words of God. So with that, we say shalom. Shalom. Shalom, this is, I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.